But here's where um, the problem is. It's the second inference the idea that because it's uh, irreducibly complex, it can't evolve. That ends up being testable too, because we can look at naturally evolving systems. We can do it in a petri dish and ask if we can actually evolve, you know, irreducibly complex systems. And it turns out that we can't. Do you have an example, Josh? Maybe like an like an argument that like people thought from ID, like this is it. This is gonna be like a really good thing and show ID is like a real thing and like evolution like can't do it all and it kind of just like didn't pan out. Well, I mean. One of the one of the great ones was uh, the irreducible complexity argument, right? And it's important to recognize, first of all, that there was many uh, there was many uh, uh, IC arguments, but the very first one was very focused, and it was brilliant in a lot of ways. So um, because it was testable, so he basically defines the irreducible complexity in a way that can be tested. Basically, we'll take some things functioning, and we'll start removing stuff from it. Um, to see until it stops functioning and whatever's left, however many parts are, that's the irreducible unit. Mm -hmm. And so it's not, so really, um, and then the claim was that, you know, evolution can't actually evolve uh, irreducibly complex things, right? And uh, and so now you have a way to test for whether something's irreducibly, uh, uh, you know, irreducibly complex. And you have a way to actually, you know, I mean, and then, you know, the, the claim is once again, that, that means that it can't actually evolve. So there's like a brilliant sense in the sense that it's objective. You can actually, objective, you can actually uh, test it on um, the degree of, uh, you know, irreducible complexity in a system. But here's where um, the problem is. It's the second inference, the idea that because it's uh, irreducibly complex, it can't evolve. That ends up being testable too, because we can look at naturally evolving systems. We can do it in a petri dish and ask if we can actually evolve, you know, irreducibly complex systems. And it turns out that we can. So irreducible complexity is something that we can actually measure in a system, but it's also something that that can evolve. <laughs> so now we have a problem here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um and that 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 that's pretty well established to the point that when you know Behe was really pushed on this. He acknowledged that, and then he went back and revised the definition of irreducibly complex. And he's allowed to do that. Um, you know, you're allowed to kind of come up with new definitions of a term and try and revise it and refine it. But then um, every single definition uh, really starts to become harder and harder to test. And so, uh, you know, how do we test? Uh, uh, you know, you know, his final book. I'm sorry, not his book. Not his final book. His second book. This would be a um, uh, uh, the Edge of Evolution it came out around 2010 or so, approximately. You know, what was striking about it is that, um, you know, the definition, uh, which he kind of equates in some ways to, uh, to irreducible complexity, is just that, you know, there's a certain number of, um, of unselected steps uh, to get from here to there. But once again, we can see and observe on uh, many cases where evolution has no problem taking many um, unselected steps to get to a place. And then, but the bigger problem is this, how do you measure it? How do you know how many ex unexpected steps there are, I'm sorry, un un um, unselected steps there are between us and a chimpanzee, for example? No one really knows how to compute that. Uh, that that's kind of something that's just an unknowable quantity. Quantity. So, I mean, maybe uh, there is, but maybe not. I mean, I, and I asked Michael Behe about this in a debate once, um, you know, do you see any evidence for design in the evolution of humans? Like, in you know, do you see any biochemical evidence for design? So do you see any irreducibly complex machines in humans that are not in chimpanzees? Do you see any non-selectable steps? Can you show there are any sets of, like, sequential non-selected steps that must happen for, um, for us to evolve from their kind of ancestral chimpanzees? Um, do you see anything other than you know stuff that evolution can do in that and and he says no he doesn't really see at this time any biochemical evidence for for design in humans now he does see evidence just in terms of our overall behavior in the sense that we have an like the human mind is kind of an amazing thing i mean we, we can do things that chimpanzees do that's not a scientific argument that's maybe a philosophical argument i think there's some there's definitely reason to be surprised about that but that's not a biochemical argument for design. And so if all these arguments are really just about bacterial flagella, I mean, 
and not really about, you know, human evolution, what are they really about? I mean, I, I don't know why they're important and salient to people, you know? Thank you.